Cora TV. The world is thinking. In the 24-hour first-person narration of McDonald's Blue City, a young veteran named John Weather hitches a ride into his unnamed Midwestern hometown in 1946 to find his father, who he hasn't seen since his mother divorced the man and left the place when Weather was 12. But his father was murdered two years before Weather's return. No one was ever charged, and everyone he meets seems part of the crime. Blue City reads like the best noir films play, and McDonald's dialogue has a slow buildup and the deadpan ricochet used by such lead actors as Dick Powell and Humphrey Bogart, and even more effectively by bit players like Thelma Ritter. How well do you know Kirch, says Carla Kaufman, a bar girl and prostitute, after Weather following a lead has bought her a drink in Kirch's cafe club which features a nightclub with plummy singers and slot machines on the first floor and a whorehouse on the second. It's a generic ancestor of Twin Peaks' One-Eyed Jacks, the luxurious brothel the Twin Peaks developer Benjamin Horn runs just over the Canadian border. I don't know Kirch at all, Weather says. That's funny, Carla says. You were talking as if you knew him. I don't have to know him not to like him, if that's what you mean. Wait till you get to know him. Then you'll really not like him. Did you ever read the fairy story about the Frog King, Carla says? My mother used to read it to me when I was a kid. It's about a man that got changed by magic into a frog and then changed back into a man. And that's the way Kirch looks, as if he didn't change all the way back into a man. Kirch was sitting at his desk counting money, Weather says, after gaining admittance into the back room of the city crime boss. His wrists bulge out, thick above his hands, as if someone had bound his hands and blown air into the rest of him. In this town, murders are not a rent in everyday reality. They're the currency, committed for reasons that everybody understands. Greed, revenge, greed, hate, greed, jealousy, greed, megalomania, and greed. As John Weather enters the Blue City Roadhouse, this is the noir version of the murder ballad. My throat was busy resisting the fierce pressure of nausea that clenched my stomach and squirted streams of saliva into my mouth. It may have been the slick of blood on the floor where my foot had slipped. It may have been the half-naked man in the corner with the discolored neck and the dead, swollen face. It may have been the woman who lay on the table with her limp legs dangling over the end. The gasoline lamp had been moved to the stove and shone fully on the bloody towel that wrapped her face. Weather discovers that his father was the original racketeer of the town, that his father's young widow is bankrolling the man who pick, picked up where he left off. He discovers that the impotent reform mayor is his father's killer. The town they've all made is a place where union organizers are beaten or killed, cops work for gangsters, taxes for the rich are kept low, and wages for everyone else are kept lower. And where an atavism, a will to social destruction, runs through the town like a disease that weather can feel and even name, native fascism. The noir town had festered on or just below the surface of cultural consciousness for 50 years by the time that Lynch took up Twin Peaks. And what was shocking in Blue City would in Twin Peaks seem inevitable, natural, with any missing detail, unnatural. Of course both the nameless Weatherville and Twin Peaks are dominated by criminal, criminal businessmen with impeccable fronts. Of course there's a mysterious heiress and a tragic horror. Of course webs of crime are also webs of love and webs of sex, and sex a form of disguise, of sinking one identity into another, and both crime and sex are forms of hysteria born of the fact that both towns are nowheresville, where nothing you will ever do will make the papers in Chicago or New York 
San Francisco or LA. Of course, both towns are laid out like a board game, with everybody fighting over the big hotel, the factory, the brothel, and the roadhouse, fighting to get in and fighting to get out. So thank you. <laughs>